And now, here to create a force field of awesomeness, it's my great pleasure to bring to this stage Executive Director of the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force, Ray Carey. myself some Madonna. <laughs> Hello, Texas. <laughs> Woo! I am loving it here in the Lone Star State. If you're from Texas, make some noise. <laughs> All right. If you're from Houston, make some noise. <laughs> if you're excited about being here at Creating Change, let's hear it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, and if you like my boots, make some noise. I'm from Colorado. I know how to ride boots and ride a horse. All right. So, you know, I love Texas because it has long been the home for some seriously strong and inspirational women. Right? Women like Governor Ann Richards, congressional legends Barbara Jordan and Sheila Jackson Lee, extraordinary state legislators, Wendy Davis, and fierce Latina and LGBT advocate, Leticia Vandepoot, who famously, hopefully you all saw her, who famously demanded that her voice be heard by her male colleagues. And their state legislator from El Paso, Mary Gonzalez, who happens to be, who happens to be the first openly pansexual elected official in the United States. And of course, Houston's dynamic Mayor Anise Parker, who we heard from last night. So here we are at Creating Change, the biggest most inclusive LGBT family reunion in the country. This conference is passionate, it's powerful, and it's more than a conference. There are 4,000 of you here at Creating Change. It wasn't that long ago when we consistently had about 2,000 people, and now that's doubled. We thought 2,000 was big. Why is it doubled? Well, yes, it's about being in Texas and having an amazing host committee. And this has become the progressive town square where people from many movements come to do their work at the intersections, to strategize together, learn from each other, and let's be real, have some fun. We draw our energy this week from the inclusion of so many perspectives and the firm knowledge that together our collective power can change everything. I am telling you, there is really no collection of letters in the alphabet that can truly capture the beauty of each of our amazing lives. If you care about immigrant rights, reproductive rights and justice, racial and economic justice, international issues, youth power, senior power, HIV and AIDS, and progressive social change, you are here and you are home. We are here in all of our identities as whole, dynamic, diverse, and fabulous human beings. And we resist the notion that you must be a lesbian on Thursday, a professor on Friday, black on Saturday, and a woman on Sunday. We are whole people. 
and we are here to build power, take action, and create change. And if I know one thing about the 4,000 people here at Creating Change and the tens of thousands following on social media, we are not shy about insisting that our voices are heard across the world, in the streets, in the media, in the White House, in every state house, in every school, in every place of worship, and the places we work. And Kate's right. We certainly made sure our voices were heard this year. 2013 showed us and this country that the winds of 2012 weren't a fluke. The, mo the momentum is in favor of progressive change. We are here to stay, our progress will continue, and we will not allow this country to turn back. <laughs> Last year was one of the biggest years in the history of the LGBT movement when it comes to legal equality. Our movement has the best legal minds in the country. And when matched with brave people like Edie Windsor, with strong advocacy and grassroots mobilization, we can't be stopped. And we showed that those who are not for equality and freedom are quickly finding themselves in the dustbins of the past. The state of our movement is, in fact, strong. <laughs> Issue number one for the task force and for the movement in this last year was ending discrimination. From employment discrimination to marriage discrimination from bullying in schools to the lack of support in assisted living programs, from discrimination against undocumented immigrants to transgender people who face horrific discrimination in literally every single area of their lives. There are too many successes to talk about last year. Believe me, I tried actually in the early drafts of this uh, remark, in this set of remarks, but our staff insisted that no one uh, wants to hear me talking for three hours, including myself. But for a few markers of our progress, we have to look no further than the great Lone Star State in the city of San Antonio, where just this past fall, Mayor Julian Castro and the San Diego City Council heard our voices, took action, and created change by passing a sexual orientation and gender identity inclusive non-discrimination ordinance. That's progress. A thousand miles away in Royal Oak, Michigan, Michigan is in the house. We pushed back yet another well-organized, well-funded attempt to destroy that city's comprehensive and inclusive non-discrimination laws, and we won. That is progress. And in the very same week as the Royal Oak victory, after two decades of work. The U.S. Senate finally and resoundingly passed ENDA. We needed 60 votes and we got 64 bipartisan votes. That is a big deal in Washington. This is critical momentum as we, pa as we push for the future passage by the U.S. House. That is progress. We finally got the Social Security Administration to catch up re to reality and no longer require transgender people to have surgery to update the gender on their Social Security card. Imagine, imagine not being able to apply for a job, get health care, or travel to see a loved one because your de gender doesn't match your card. I know a lot of you in this room have experienced that. Well, we got that changed, and that's progress. And then, of course, there is the freedom to marry the person we love. Our movement has worked for years to create a climate in which more states could get marriage equality, and the Supreme Court could let the demise of Prop 8 stand 
and strike the death knell for the so-called DOMA. If you are from one of the now 17 states, plus DC, that now has marriage equality, congratulations. And don't worry, those of you from Utah, we know you're married. I'm proud to say that our task force staff were there on the ground helping local advocates to win many of these battles and others over the last year. For example, when the Minnesota legislature passed a same-sex marriage bill, it had much to do with the task force's partnership with Minnesotans United for Marriage, Outfront Minnesota, Project 15, and welcoming congregations in mobilizing people of faith to talk to their legislators through calls and visits, and it worked. Some of the most powerful moments for me, personally this year, were those that unfortunately, some still don't see as LGBT moments. Like when here in Texas, hundreds of women and men join together and organize the people's filibuster for our right to make our decisions about our own bodies. <laughs> Moments like when Cece McDonald was released early from prison and she has come out stronger than ever. She's come out not just for LGBT freedom, but in speaking out for desperately needed prison reform. <laughs> Moments like when the president announced on Tuesday that he will sign an executive order raising the minimum wage for federal contractors, and millions of people will be better able to make ends meet. <laughs> and moments like partnering with our immigrant rights colleagues to get the Senate to pass immigration reform and how throughout the year thousands of people protested, engaged in civil disobedience, and put their bodies on the line demanding a path to citizenship for over 11 million people. One of the most importance for me was linking arms with 104 other women as we sat down in the middle of Independence Avenue next to the U.S. Capitol and got arrested for immigration reform. The courage, the courage of the undocumented women who put their freedom on the line that day and every day is still with me. Immigration reform, reproductive rights and justice, gender justice, prison reform, fair pay, racial justice, these are all LGBT issues. Yes, they are. And all of these victories, all of this progress, they have one thing in common. You, us, and people like us working together at the local, state, and national level to ensure that everyone is able to live free from discrimination. Together, we built grassroots power and we used it for change. <laughs> to be sure, 2013 was big. And our work is far from finished in ensuring that all LGBT LGBT people and their families can one day taste the sweetness of freedom. We are being separated. Our families are being separated because of a broken immigration system. We can still be fired for who we are, who we love, in 29 states because we're lesbian, gay, or bisexual, and in 33 if we are transgender. Sure, you can get married, but put a picture of your wedding on your desk at work, and a bigoted supervisor can get you fired. We can still be turned away at the polling station 
because of our gender identity and the color of our skin, as voting rights are being systematically eroded by the courts, and as our friend Al Sharpton calls it, James Crow Jr. politics. Yes, there is much that remains to be done to achieve freedom for LGBT people. We still have items to attend to, including to push the House of Representatives to pass the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, to pass fair immigration reform, to raise the minimum wage for everyone, and to restore the heart of the Voting Rights Act. And if this House if this House won't be fair-minded on the issues that, aff that affect our country, let's elect a House that is. Let us intensify our fight to protect LGBT people in parts of the country where barely any laws exist to provide safety and opportunity for LGBT people. We must stand shoulder to shoulder with our friends in the reproductive justice movement and oppose our common foes in the quest for liberation and freedom. And we must stay engaged in the implementation of the Affordable Care Act as it is under attack and oppose the harmful policies that have trans health exclusions. And And we must, once and for all, eradicate racial profiling. Now, of course, the change that we must push for isn't just legal change. We must push for a country, and frankly, for an LGBT movement that shows leadership on ending the HIV AIDS epidemic, not just for some, but for everyone. And since the president neglected to say it on Tuesday night, I will say it loud and clear. We need an executive order banning discrimination against the millions of LGBT people who work for federal contractors. Mr. President, take out your pen and line it up with your stated values. As we approach the 45th anniversary of Stonewall, it's easy for us to say that we've come a long way, and we have an incredibly long way. Yet today, every victory that the task force and we as a movement, we as a people, achieve makes clear the inequalities that remain. The painful gap between progress and true freedom. This is the bridge we must build and walk proudly from legal equality to the other side, which is the power of lived freedom. As we find ourselves standing in the spotlight of victory on marriage, we must redouble our commitment to the long haul and the full range of needs we have as a community. Plus, remember, there are still 33 states where we live as second-class citizens because we can't marry the person we love. And let's not allow our movement's progress to be measured on marriage alone. Let's not be lulled into thinking that it would resolve the injustices that remain. And we, we must see the danger in whispering or thinking that there are good gays 
and bad gays. That being a good gay means getting married or being HIV negative. That being a bad gay means building a family that defies the boxes on the census or being HIV positive. Let's not be those people. Let's not lose the fact that long before Stonewall, our very insistence on our sexuality, on the uniqueness of how we create families, on the beauty of our queer culture and how it helped to make this community and this country strong. Let's not lose sight of that. We must not ignore our own moral compass at the very moment when looking in many directions is what is called for. We must not lose ourselves at the very moment we are finding freedom. Instead, we must think big about where we go from here. We have spent decades building power now we must use it, and use it with care, and compassion, and love. After all, what type of community do we want our families to thrive in? What movement can we create that benefits all, not just some? What type of world do we want to live in? We must be more determined than ever to lead the effort to create a world where no one is devalued, no one is an afterthought, and no one is left behind in what is quickly becoming a divided country, the haves and the have-nots, including when it comes to LGBT equality. Let us not be divided. Each of us will have a different way of knowing that we have reached a milestone on the road to full equality, justice, and freedom. For the single mom in Minnesota, it might be a nation where women are actually paid the same as men. Right? For the millions of young women and men across the fine state of Texas, including LGBT people, full freedom may mean full access to comprehensive reproductive health care, including abortion, even and especially if you are poor. That's right. That's right. And for the dad living in Florida, progress might mean, it might mean to be in a neighborhood where his teenage son is in stalked and shot dead by a vigilante. For the black transgender woman in Georgia, first time voter, full justice may mean not being turned away at the polling station because of the gender marker on, on her ID or the color of her skin. And since we're in Texas, for the up-and-coming lesbian rodeo rider, it might mean she could actually be openly, proudly out. We also can't forget our relationship to our friends around the world. Those of us in the U.S. have much to share and much to learn when it comes to political and social change for LGBT people. I am thankful for the organizations in our movement who have as their primary mission and expertise international work. They have been working for decades to create change and support and learn 
from our colleagues in other countries. Freedom, freedom for LGBT people in Russia, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, Uganda, Saudi Arabia, and numerous other countries, numerous other countries. Might, might means simply being able to be out without being arrested or having your children taken away from you or without being tortured or murdered. When the Olympics have come and gone, let's not stop talking about the rest of the world where LGBT people suffer, including here in the United States. While my remarks here each year are about our movement as a whole and what we can do, let me briefly say something about where the, ta where the task force is headed. Our board and staff have spent the last year examining where we are in our progress for both legal equality and lived freedom, the unique contributions the task force makes in achieving progress, and the social, technological, and political forces that require adaptation and innovation. And here's what we know. The task force is best when we lead and innovate and, ask, and act. So in the next few years, you can expect we will expand our progressive voice to push the envelope on the range of issues affecting our lives. We will build, we will build a bigger base of skilled organizers and activists to work on the ground at the intersections of issues like reproductive justice, economic and racial justice, immigration, and our lives as LGBT people. We will be building a more diverse leadership for our movement's organizations. We will be making visible the many ways, not just passing laws, that change is being created by and for LGBT people. And we will use innovations and technologies that are being used regularly in other sectors to make engaging in this movement more accessible to more people. And we will be implementing a more expansive creating change as an in-person and virtual crowd-sourced social justice engine pro pro propelling our movement forward. <laughs> Ultimately, the future of the task force and the future of our movement is about possibility. It's like what Laverne Cox says, instead of a role model, she calls herself a possibility model. Possibility model. The future of our movement is to show that it is possible to come out of the isolation of any closet you may be in, to be fully proud of who we are and to step into the power and fabulousness that is each and every one of us. And as Laverne urged us last night, to love ourselves and love each other. To those of you here who may have recently come out or are working to be fully who you are, I say to you, you are beautiful and strong and powerful and we need you because together we have a lot of work to do. We need you. Our power is to show this country what is possible together, what it means to survive together. 
our power is to provide hope to society for the future. The truth is, our journey of self, from isolation to pride to power to love, is our journey of community, is our movement's journey. For those of us who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, same gender loving, and yes, straight, our journey is from daring to recognize the light within that is our true identity to the power of our humanity and our love to change hearts, minds, laws, and lives. The question that confronts us as a movement, as an LGBT people, is what will we do with the collective power we have attained, perceived or real? Power is obviously complicated. It's been used against us through overt and systemic homophobia, bi and transphobia, racism, sexism, in so many painful ways. And many of us do not have traditional power or privilege in, in this society. But every single one of us has the power of our journey, of our story, and the fact that we have survived. Yes, equality does reside in changing laws, having the ability to get married, to be out at work, having openly LGBT elected officials. But equity, equity and freedom, to, true freedom will not exist until we end discrimination and transform this society. The measure of our progress can't only be whether we pass a state law or change a federal policy. The measure of our progress must be when a black trans woman can walk down a city street at night without being hit with a bottle, harassed, bullied, or worse, brutally murdered. The measure of our progress must be when a student with gay parents feels safe asking a school to change its mother-father permission slips to parent or guardian. And the school does it without question, or better yet, the school does it before even being asked. The measure of our progress must also be about the growing numbers of us who, when asked by a hotel clerk if we and our partners would like one bed or two, confidently say, one bed, please. <laughs> These seemingly small day-to-day -day actions, walking down a street, turning in a permission slip, falling asleep together, turn out to be very, very big. And they are what our movement is made of. They are what demonstrates our progress. I myself still struggle. As privileged as I am being white, living in the District of Columbia with marriage and some of the best non-discrimination laws in the country, I have to decide every single time someone on a bus or a train or plane ask me what I do for work. If I am going to say, I work for the freedom of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. And friends, admittedly, I sometimes hesitate. And I sometimes falter. And I am sorry. But when I do, I draw upon the strength of you, the strength, the power, and the courage of us as a movement of powerful people 
to create a world in which none of us has to hesitate or falter. None of us. None of us. None of us. That is the world we are working for. We know, we in this room and our friends across the country know that legal and policy progress is absolutely critical, but it is not freedom. We will win marriage in all 50 states. We will. And we will, non we will win non-discrimination across the land. And we will partner with our friends in other countries for change. And then, as history has proven, through the labor, civil rights, and reproductive justice movements, the tough work of holding on to that legal equality and moving towards full freedom will test our resolve but I know we won't walk away from the challenge that lies ahead. We are strong. We all know from our struggles and the many lives we've lost from Stonewall to the AIDS crisis to the relentless violence that takes the lives of trans people far too often, to the despair that too many young people still feel how brief and precious life can be. Let's make it worth every moment we are here on this earth to inspire each other, to transform society, to feel collective pride, to step up and leverage our power to demand and achieve lasting change. Even if we were to win everything legally, do you think our opponents would give up and go home? No. Our responsibility as a people in this moment, in this moment, is to accept the responsibility, the privilege, and the power of our progress on issues such as marriage and use it well to call attention to the fact that our work for equity, freedom, and justice for us and for all is not done. I ask you to take a moment and look around this room. Really look. All the way to the back all the way to the front, really look. See this room. When you head home from creating change or face a tough day, when you hesitate or even falter, I ask you to remember this day, this week here in Houston and have strength. Know that you are not alone. You can press on, and we will succeed. We will succeed. And yes, we are powerful as individuals, yet we are even more powerful together as a people acting out of love, pushing for a just society, and creating lasting change for all. We need more change. We need more change. We need more change. We need more change. 
we do need more change. Friends, together we can create more change and we will be free. Thank you.